Hi, everyone. Um, I am uh, Ed, and I hope you can see me up on the screen there. Yep, you can see me up on the screen there. So, um, and I am the uh, disruptor in uh, Deloitte Digital. Deloitte Digital is a uh, management consultancy, and what I do for them is I look at new technology and work out ways in which uh, we can use it and which we can use it with our clients. Um, and it's a really exciting time right now uh, to be working with new technology because there is uh, so much new technology uh, coming out and just on the horizon. Uh, and the pace at which uh, this new technology is emerging um, is increasing all the time. The danger with that, though, is that it's very easy to get distracted. Uh, so something shiny comes along over here, and then you get something that's shiny and 3D printed over here, and then you get something shiny, 3D printed with a robot and it, an artificial intelligence over there, and then bam, your head, wait, I was gonna do the bam, head exploding, there's my head exploding. Your head just explodes with how awesome uh, everything is. Um, so, in order to stop our heads exploding um, from awesomeness, uh, we, in the disruption team at Deloitte Digital, have a motto that we follow very, very closely, and that is to fall in love with the problem rather than in love with the solution. Because um, it's very easy, when you've got a virtual reality headset, to think that all of the world's problems can be solved with a virtual reality headset. And a lot of them can be, but not, not all of them. Um, so, it's, uh, so, so it's really, really important for us to remember this and, and really study the problem that we're trying to solve and remember who it is that we're trying to uh, help uh, at the end of the day so that we can, um, uh, so that we can focus on that. Um, so uh, we, we're looking, in order to kind of understand how you might fall in love with the solution, um, we're going to be looking at um, a, a technology that we're working with, in this case, um, virtual reality. So you can see um, here at the moment, I am, as well as speaking to you on stage, um, I'm also speaking to you from inside this uh, virtual world, um, which is called Altspace VR. And actually, we have people from all over the world uh, here with me in Altspace VR. I tried to... Um, make my clothes uh, match my avatar's clothes as closely as I could. Um, unfortunately, Altspace doesn't yet have a uh, kind of hairstyle um, for whatever this is. Uh, it doesn't have an option for that yet, but they're working on it, I've heard. So um, what, and, and so I've made it match, so hopefully it's a little bit less weird because look, white, white shirt, blue jeans. Um, that kind of thing. So in, in Altspace VR, this is a social VR platform. So we've got people from uh, all around the world in here. We've got people from Norway. Anyone who's the... This guy, this guy from Norway over here. He's from Norway. Um, we've got people from London. We've got a robot. We've got Mexico. We've got Mexico as well. Um, I can hear what they're saying, but you guys, you guys can't hear what they're saying. It's all nice. It's all safe, but, it's, um, but, but you can't hear it. Uh, and uh, so we've got some other robots um, as well. So yeah, if you guys can all wave, guys in, in the room, if you all wave, yeah. So these guys are all over the world, um, but they're appearing with you. They're saying hello, and they love you all very much. Um, so, so yeah, very, um, very, very exciting. Guys, I'm hopefully going to come back to you in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for, for being here, and um, I'll see you soon. Fist, was that a fist bump, Jeremy? Were you doing a fi kind of a fist bump? There we go. Cool. Um, so uh, so yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be back with you guys in just a second, hopefully if I am still running to time. But thanks very much for your help. So I'm going to talk to you now in actual reality. So I'm going to take off my uh, my headset and talk to you in actual reality. So. Hello, everyone, um, and actual reality. So I think we should... Uh, oh, and I've got my clicker here as well, so now I can move things forward. So that was Altspace uh, VR that we were looking at here. We are also working with, as well as virtual reality, we're also working with um, 
um, augmented and mixed realities. So you might have heard of Pokemon Go, um, which kind of popularized augmented reality. So we're working with that. And, um, but for today, we're going to focus on uh, virtual reality and what that can do. Um, so first of all, we're just going to have a quick look at the, the kind of the history of virtual reality and the state of it at the moment. And then we're going to look at the sort of things that um, uh, virtual reality can do. Uh, so virtual reality has been around actually for a relatively long time. Um, the first headset similar to the one that I was wearing today was actually invented by a guy called Ivan Sull uh, Sullivan, um, uh, Ivan, S Ivan Sutherland, sorry, uh, in 1968, and it was called the Sword of Democles because it hung down from the ceiling. Um, that's kind of a Bible reference. Um, and it was uh, very, very heavy, which was the reason it had to be supported uh, from the ceiling. But that was way back in 1968. And then since then, um, a lot of other headsets were developed. People tried to bring virtual reality in. Um, one of the famous ones was the Nintendo Virtual Boy, um, which made you feel very, very ill. It was uh, very, very laggy. Um, and it, it was quite uncomfortable. Um, but at, at the same time, the military were also developing virtual reality experiences, but those were incredibly expensive, um, costing millions of dollars um, for a single set. But then um, the uh, smartphone wars happened. So the big smartphone companies uh, started developing their smartphone technologies, and they made big improvements to the uh, accelerometers, which measure how fast the phone is going, um, to the gyroscopes, which measure kind of which direction the phone is, uh, is facing in, to the processors, which do the calculations on the phone, and to the screens um, and the displays. And so we were able to use the technology that had been developed for smartphones um, inside the uh, virtual reality headsets like you see today. And the best way to demonstrate that is just to uh, if you have a phone and you grab one of the cardboard headsets, like the one that we have here, um, you can just, with a headset made purely of cardboard and some lenses, you can pop your phone inside it and you can create quite a compelling uh, virtual reality experience. One of the first experiences I had was a horror game uh, called Sisters, and uh, in the dark, with headphones on, I'm ashamed to say I screamed really, really loudly, and it was genuinely scary. Um, and that was just using a mobile phone. So that's the Google Cardboard, and then you've got the Google Daydream, which is also mobile-enabled. Um, the Samsung Gear VR, like the one we have here, also your mobile phone slots inside that. And then we have the tethered headset, so um, that are capable of kind of more powerful experiences. So the PlayStation VR, which was uh, recently released. Some of you may already have it. Um, and then the, uh, the kind of the big daddies of the uh, VR world, the HTC Vive. Again, it's a tethered experience, so you're attached to the computer via cables, um, like, like I am attached here, and the Oculus Rift, which is uh, what I have here. So again, you're, you're tethered. And you'll have heard a lot about how these can be used for gaming and entertainment. And that is really, really exciting. The games on it are awesome. If you get a chance, well, yeah, if you want to come and try it out in London, just let me know, because um, I'm always keen to play more games on it. Um, but the things that I am uh, looking at, I'm looking at how it can be used practically um, with businesses and with our clients. So what are the unique selling points of VR? Why, why is VR more effective um, than, than film or other media that we've used up until now? Well, the key word here is presence. So when you're inside a, a virtual reality experience, and I'm sorry that you can't all come up on stage and try it, because it is very difficult to describe, but you do feel like you are present um, to varying degrees inside uh, the experience. It also has your full focus and attention, um, which actually, for a lot of reasons, is quite good. I mean, if you're just watching a uh, TV program on a, on a 2D screen, um, you can you know, browse on your phone and stuff like that. If you're watching a TEDx talk, actually, some of you can browse on your phone. Um, no, actually, I can't see anyone who is browsing on their phone, so thank you. Um, but So it has your full focus and attention, um, which is great. And it's also very flexible, so we can do anything inside virtual reality. So we can simulate situations that would be unsafe. We can simulate situations that might not occur very often in real life 
or we can simulate things that, that don't actually exist in the, uh, in the real world. So how can it be used? So one of the big areas where virtual reality is being used is in medicine. Um, this is actually an example of it being used as a uh, distraction technique in order to reduce pain. So the patient on the right-hand side there is a, a burns victim, and uh, by going through this wintry environment, um, he's actually distracted while his bandages are being changed, and that's actually proved to be really, really effective at reducing the amount of pain those patients feel. It can also be used for fears and uh, other psychological conditions. So um, for, for phobias, in this case, this guy has a fear of heights, but if you have a fear of spiders as well, you can start off with a nice cartoon spider and then work your way up to something more realistic and uh, in, in a safe environment. Um, and other kind of psychological conditions um, can be treated uh, using it as well, such as post-traumatic stress disorder. And it can also be used as a way to improve physical therapy. So physical therapy at the moment um, without VR can be quite boring, but actually uh, what um, they've shown is people who have suffered a stroke, uh, having virtual reality and having kind of a gamified um, version of their physical therapy, they've actually, that's improved their upper body strength uh, and their upper limb strength um, at a quicker rate than those people who were just doing the standard uh, physical therapy. It's also being used a lot for uh, activism and journalism. Um, this is Chris Milk uh, up here. He gave an excellent TED talk that you should uh, definitely watch, um, talking about the ultimate empathy machine and how VR is that ultimate empathy machine because it literally allows you to put yourself in someone else's shoes. And so to understand the plight of people around the world, ha having a tool like that is, uh, is, is very, very useful and uh, very, very compelling. And so he did some work uh, early on with the UN, and since then, other charities and NGOs uh, have done work around this, including um, UNICEF. And it's being used for, for kind of marketing more generally as well. So a, a recent example was a car company that did a, a product launch uh, in, in VR. Um, so people were able to see the car. And actually at some car showrooms, especially in China, uh, they have the cars that you're only able to see with the virtual reality headset because the cars aren't actually there yet. And so you can order them uh, beforehand without having, uh, having seen them. Um, and then it's also being used in architecture and design. So. Um, uh, we're using it to model our new offices. Um, this is an example of the kind of the architecture, uh, the architectural modeling that you can do in VR. Um, and it's also being used for kind of collaborative design as well. So definitely have a go on Tilt Brush if you ever get a chance to. Um, it's, uh, it's a great tool that allows you to kind of paint within a 3D space. And um, that's being used um, for a number of things, for kind of product design, uh, but it's also being used, uh, I saw recently, I was at a theater, and the set designer was designing the whole set uh, inside virtual reality using Tilt Brush. So she was designing this amazing set, uh, and she was doing it all without having to make a model or anything like that. She was just conjuring it out of thin air in Tilt Brush, which was, uh, which was really incredible. Also can be used for, for data visualization. Um, so today, companies have a lot of data, and uh, it can sometimes be difficult uh, to visualize it, and it can sometimes be a bit dry. And so, you know, adding lasers makes everything cool. Uh, so here we've added lasers, and uh, the data is now fun. Um, but you can, you can you, so it allows you to present data that otherwise would be kind of difficult to understand, and it allows you to manipulate that. And then finally, um, it's being used within training and education. So that's the, the, the main use that we are uh, putting it to at Deloitte Digital. Um, initially, we were doing a lot of technical training. So a lot of people think about kind of doing surgery um, in VR and practicing surgery using the, the, the hands like I had there. Um, and this is actually a health and safety uh, thing that we built for a, uh, for a fictional um, mining company. And so th those technical uses were really good, but actually it's also very, very good at changing people's behavior, changing their softer skills, so how they behave to other people, how they talk to colleagues, that kind of thing. 
And so we've started to use it more for softer skills and training people to kind of improve the way that they interact with uh, customers. And also in medicine as well, they're now live streaming operations to help uh, train, train doctors um, too. So going back to medicine, but from a training perspective. And then finally as well, education. So uh, this is actually taken from uh, Google Expeditions. So this allows classes to go to, a, um, to another place and uh, it allows them to travel there using the VR headsets, using the cardboards in that way, and so they can go anywhere in the world. And that's obviously gonna be really, really transformative to be able to travel, in this case, to the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, or to go to a lab um, so that you can see uh, the, the kind of the work that's being done there will be absolutely um, amazing. And then virtual reality for collaboration. So you saw the meeting that we were having there. It was kind of a meeting, mainly people waving, and a lot of robots and there's a lot of robots there as well. But um, the, the meetings are, are good, actually. Are much, much, they're quite different and more natural than you would have for a, uh, for a conference call. So the, basically, going back, the, the things that will work with the, uh, the new technology are the ones where people have understood, uh, understood the problem that they're trying to solve and not just adopted VR because it's cool. Um, but they've actually thought about the problem. So remember to fall in love with a problem, uh, not in love with a solution. Think about who you're going to help. It doesn't mean be boring and think up lots of problems. It's not that. It's about thinking big as well and about thinking, uh, thinking creatively. Um, but then once you've, once you've thought big and once you've thought about the problem and how you can solve it completely, then start small, build something simple that kind of proves, proves, your, uh, proves your concept and prove it could work. And then test it a lot. Because if you're doing something to help someone, make sure that you test it with them. So go to them and ask them, because you, don't, you won't really understand their problems if you're not testing it with them and helping them in, in that way. So yeah, that's my big motto for the day, is uh, fall in love with a problem, uh, not in love with the solution. Um, the problem that I have right now is that I have run out of time. Um, so uh, thank you very much for listening, guys. And uh, I'll see you in, in virtual reality.